Uh, right, I've been fed, I've been watered. I am absolutely fine and dandy and ready to go. So welcome along, folks. It is Wednesday, and what are we going to do here? Marketing would like to add a new product to our driver merch store exclusive for the next GP. Well, let's give him a rain jacket. Let's give him a rain jacket. I guarantee you that's going to be a, a good seller. Especially if it rains in France, like uh, it always does. But it is episode 84 of the uh, F123 My Team Career Mode with Team Chase Liner. It's time for the French Grand Prix. And I am hiccuping like mad. Oh dear me. I am really hiccuping like mad. Everything looks hunky dory doodles and it looks fantastic. So we'll skip and advance that and welcome you all along. If you do like the content you see, don't forget to consider hitting the like button. Also, uh, consider that subscribe button as well. Helps uh, a long way to the growth of the channel. And also, uh, tells YouTube to uh, get off their rear end and start pushing people a lot more. There is our departments. There is how our car is. You can see that everyone from Haas to Red Bull are so close in the uh, tree. But it doesn't feel it, does it? It really, really doesn't feel it. There's our engine, there's our sponsors. <clears throat> Cali is 96 rated. Cali is 96 rated, folks. Drivers' Championship and Jackie, she leads the way by uh, 27 points from Lewis Hamilton and comes Max Sapper, George Russell, Sergio Perez, Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris, Oscar Piastri, Liam Lawson, and Carlos Sainz round out your top 10. Cali P13 with 22 points. And still yet to score, Guan Yu Zhou, Felipe Drogovic, Nick De Vries, and Logan Sargent. We got some uh, rewards to claim. Indeed we do. Oh, I've got some stickers. Wow, stickers. Be able to uh, get uh, some more stuff going with that. Yippee! But, uh, yeah. All right then, folks, we're going to get practiced and uh, qualified. We'll see you for the French Grand Prix. Traditionally, it usually rains here. So uh, hopefully it'll rain again and uh, we'll be able to uh, get out there and uh, kick some serious uh, bootay for you all. Oh, hello. Morning, as you may have heard, Lewis Hamilton held a press conference with their agent this morning announcing their decision to retire from F1. Ooh. Now, who's likely to go to that seat? That that is a great question. Who is likely to go to uh, to that seat? But at least we're we'll finally getting a big retirement from a big seat. Oh well, let's go do the, the French Grand Prix. Ricard, current home of the French Grand Prix, an event dating all the way back to 1906. Now it's been held at many venues over the years, with famous moments from Dijon and Manicure, the feature of many a highlights reel. So let's hope we see more of those in the race today. We have 15 corners here at the circuit, Paul Ricard, six to the left and nine to the right. But the rain is coming down and making for a slippery racing surface. But luckily, there is plenty of runoff area available and hopefully we'll be able to avoid bringing out a safety car during today's Grand Prix. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. The governess lines up on pole position, edging out Lando Norris, who'll start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Oscar Piastri, Mayer, Hamilton, Sainz, Liam Lawson, Perez, Leclerc, Ocon, Stroll, Bottas, Verstappen, Gasly, Joe, Drugovich, Magnussen, Albon, Sonoda, Sargent, and Nick de Vries. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. With me today, of course, is Natalie Pinkham. Can we begin by having a chat about Sergio Perez? And we welcome Anthony Davidson to the commentary box once again. And this driver had a great win last time out. Can I carry that momentum into this one? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to uh, carry. So you can see that our prayers have been answered and the raid is here at the circuit, Paul Ricard saying okay, that uh, Jackie's stopping the uh, prowess uh, isn't here because uh, <laughs> that would have been so much better. But Callie having a, a great session in P5. Hopefully this is uh, the start of Callie Mayer finally showing up uh, at Grand Prix again. 
It's only taken a half a season. There is a rumour going around that I'm uh, considering replacing her at uh, the Hungarian Grand Prix, but uh, we may or may not do that as we go to the five red lights and the lights are out. Away we go here at the circuit. Paul Ricard, Jackie, everyone gets a decent stop, but that Mercedes of George Russell got a lightning start. Absolutely lightning start, I must uh, say there from the Mercedes. I'm, I'm very impressed with uh, that one, but uh, if anyone shines in these conditions, we all know who shines in these conditions. It's this girl right here. She shines above the rest and she shines bright like a diamond. Except that diamond is uh, not a bus company. That's, uh, that's a sure she was in charge of that company. It wouldn't be called diamond, it'd be called something else. And it uh, wouldn't be... Uh, very nice either <laughs> as uh, Stroll and uh, we see Stroll and Perez uh, having a fight over P10 but uh, Jackie is already 1.6 seconds ahead of the field her pace this weekend in the rain has been lightning it has been absolutely lightning and that that's all that can be said and where she is really good which surprises me the most is this final sector because this final sector she is just it's, it's just effortless sometimes but you can see they're gaining on her through uh, the fast corners but through these slow corners where she's got all this downforce and all this grip she's just pulling that time back I mean you can look there she's just gained three temps in that one corner alone that one corner alone she gained another couple of temps in that corner as well she is literally hooked into this circuit and hooked into these weather conditions and that's what you uh, need from her. Callie's up to P4 so Callie is uh, on the march as well as uh, we head to the line to start lap number two and uh, I'm afraid folks uh, you'll find that uh, not a lot uh, happens in this uh, Grand Prix because uh, uh, we're now going on to lap number three and uh, Pierre Gasly one of the French guys in the Alpine He's uh, really struggling down in P16 to get past Felipe Drugovic in the Haskar. And he's using uh, Valtteri Bottas in the Alfa Romeo to pull him along. But around the outside of the Minstrel chicane and up into P15 goes the Frenchman. That is uh, a job done right there. And you can see if you look at the um, timing screen, Jackie's lead up to nearly four seconds as uh, Valtteri Bottas here is coming up to turn four turn five and oh he's got the power a bit too much that's gonna be a yellow flag if he can get it going again he does get it going again that's uh that is good and how is red that flag. a red flag? flag everyone's okay he got the Even I've got to have a word about that decision. That is a BS decision. And now we see that uh, the conditions are going to get better during the end of the ground, oh boy. You're going to start us on soft tyres, aren't you? You're going to start everyone on soft tyres. And we're going to get stuck on the inters, aren't we? That's what you're going to do, EA. I can see this coming a mile away. I might just preempt them and put the... Uh, Put the soft tyres on now. I might. Although they're not giving me the option to. So maybe everyone is going to start on the Inters. I think everyone may start on the Inters here. Let, let's see. Let's hope that uh, everyone's started on Inters. Because if they're not, then... Uh, well. You will see a rage quit of uh, this. And you'll never see this game ever again. Because that, that is my uh, promise to you. So let's see. They've start no, everyone has started on Inter. So that, that's good. But uh, the track, you can see the track, it definitely looks like it has dried up significantly. Russell didn't get a good start that time. Uh, in fact, Carlos Sainz was the uh, car that got a, a fantastic start. So did uh, Lando Norris as he's side by side with Jackie into turn one and turn two. But if I know this girl, that uh, should be the last we see of uh, the pair of them. And she should be able to pull out that uh, gap that she uh, gets against. Her car, this car, turns so good in these slow corners. It's unbelievable. And she's already got that gap up to a second. Already it's up to a second. 
well, it's not quite up to a second yet, but it will be up to a, a second momentarily as we head down the Minstrel straight for the first time. Well, for the first time in its restart, I should say. George Russell's really struggling back there. He's uh, disappearing off the back of Lando Norris very quickly. As we go through the Minstrel chicane, Jackie gets a, a couple of attempts, or well, maybe more than a couple of attempts on uh, him there. And that uh, that is good. Let's we'll see how it uh, looks through the fast right. And then into the double right. Uh, I would say it looks uh, decent enough. And she didn't uh, lose too much. I thought she got the back end stepping out there. But uh, look at that. Four temps alone in that corner alone. Four temps. And it's going to be even more. There's another temp, couple of temps for you on top of that. This car is just hooked into these uh, wet conditions. And hooked in very, very nicely. Thank you very much, uh, game. So if you wouldn't mind keeping the track a little bit moist, that would be uh, absolutely fantastic. Because then she could disappear off into the distance, and uh, we can go and uh, we can go and do our thing. Because we like it when we do our thing. But uh, we move to lap number nine. But you can see the track looks significantly drier. So maybe we're not too far off getting soft on this car. Jackie's lead up to four seconds, as uh, Alex Albon and Nick DeVries slow to the slow thing. Go side by side through the minstrel chicane. Excuse me. And that is going to be P. Well, I don't know. This is a five for P9. Hello, free wide. Here comes Logan Sargent to join the party. <laughs> Where did you. <laughs> Logan Sargent <laughs> strapped on the big butt set there. And I mean, oh my god, Nick DeVries understeered into the side of Albon. He might have got away with that. And he may have only just got away with that. I hope he got away with that because uh, we don't want to see uh, Nick DeVries slower than the slow thing. Although he's already slower than the slow thing, so he'd be slower than the slower than the slow thing. That's a lot of slowers right there. But side, this is side by side. It's been going on for nearly a lap here. This is great racing. It's only for P19. Only P19. What is Oscar Piastri doing? I've just noticed Piastri down in 22nd. What is going on? We've got Verstappen and Stroll fighting each other. We've got... Uh, Ocon and Gasly fighting uh, up there as well. De Vries now past Albon. And that should be the end. No, they're going <laughs> to they're gonna carry it on. This is great racing. This is fantastic. See, if no one else is giving you the entertainment up the front, these guys are going to give you the entertainment. Oh, the aggressive sergeant's gone around. Logan Sergeant went around. Did you see? <laughs> Though that should be a red flag, because that's the same as Bottas, he's right there. Obviously uh, not, though. As, uh, let's, let's have a look at uh, Verstappen and Stroll uh, having this uh, scrap with each other. Through turn one and two, you've got the two Alpines there side by side. Ocon and Gasly. Let's have a look at uh, them, because I think Verstappen has got that uh, job done. Ocon now uh, getting past Gasly, but Gasly's uh, going to come back at him through turn four into turn five. And then turn six, this really tight little uh, corner, which will lead on to seven and eight, and then on to the Minstrel straight, which is uh, all well and good. And I think Gasly has uh, got up another position, and Jackie's lead is up to five seconds on the field. Five seconds, but look at this, side by side down the Minstrel straight, and uh, Magnussen and Show want to get in on the action side by side as well. You love seeing uh, stuff like that as uh, Piastri has passed Sargent. So I assume Sargent's only just recovered now, which uh, I don't understand that uh, there. But then again, I never understood that uh, to begin with as uh, Jackie... Oh, DRS enabled! Oh, now what do you do? She's going... What is this? This is a gamble. Usually when you enable DRS, you usually say that the track is ready. I don't... I, this is not a gamble I would have taken. She had a gap of six seconds. She was flying. She was hooked into the car. Oh, I don't... I, oh, I, hey, do your thing. You do your thing, girl. Just pull that out there. If she wants to do this, then, hey, go for it. But uh, me personally, I wouldn't have taken this gamble. I wouldn't have taken this gamble personally, if uh, I'm honest with you. She's down in P17. And she's got what? 
two and a half laps to try and get these to oh she is off the track i don't think she can get the temperature going here we go now we're going so she's up to p16 now fantastic so p16 is hers i, I imagine p15 will be hers in a second maybe p14 as well yeah p15 up the inside of joe how about the inside oh that is that is now tell me the track's not ready she has got a lot to make up and not a lot of time uh, to do it in but if anyone can with the pace of uh, this car we know who that uh, one person is and the two alpines are next up on the hit list just look at the grip she's got through one and two it's insane grip we got joe and magnuson side by side they are gonna uh, have a battle out here but uh, meanwhile we need to be looking at this car because this car's flying not only is she flying, oh my god, she is, Summit's uh, just flown off uh, into the distance there. Oh, and she's off the track. Oh, <laughs> she, she was off the track and she was disappearing down the, the straight. But uh, I'm not sure, I don't think this gamble's going to work here. Callie's uh, making a move. She's uh, up into P4 ahead of Lewis Hamilton, which uh, is good to see. The two Alpines are side by side fighting each other now. As uh, Jackie is really marching, she is really catching stroll. But I, I, this gamble's not worked. This gamble has not worked. I'm afraid. I think she should have stayed out. I'm right. I think she should have stayed out. But up, oh my God, up the inside of stroll. She has got ten places to make up, and she's got one lap to do it in. And she, I don't think she's just going to do it. This was this was not a gamble to take. You have just thrown away a guaranteed race victory. And you've thrown it away to basically do nothing. She's not even got DRS on Matt Verstappen. I, I don't understand this decision. Somebody please make me exp help me explain this decision of why she decided to take it. That's getting close to Verstappen. Uh, closer than it actually needed to be, but uh, she's got the grip. She has got the insane amount of grip. Up next is Felipe Drugovic, who has found himself in uh, the points. Uh, I don't want to see stuff like that. Felipe Drugovic could score his first points uh, of the career mode right here. And somehow, uh, uh, somehow, I don't know how, but uh, let's go with somehow and go from there. But uh, I think if Jackie's uh, smart, she's going to wait She's only going to score two points out of this. This this is just... This is not right. Why did you take this? She, she's got the drive. She's got the hell drive out of the uh, corner. She has thrown away a race victory. As Drogovic is coming back at her for some bizarre reason. But look at this. Up at the front of the field. Look who's going to take advantage of this. It's, oh, it's, I swear, this is not right. She had the race victory in the back of her pocket. Bottas has uh, overtaken Kevin Magnussen. But Lando Norris, because Jackie was so stupid. She was, I think she should have stayed out. I think you all agree. We'll, we'll probably agree with me. She should have stayed out on uh, the, uh, the intermediate tyre and just made it work. But Lando Norris wins the uh, French Grand Prix and lucks into it. As uh, Jackie did get Liam Lawson somewhere back there, but it's only going to be P8. Another superb French Grand Prix comes to an end then, and it's a thoroughly deserved victory. So, Natalie, what made the difference out there today? Well, confidence breeds confidence. Success breeds success. They are very much enjoying a purple patch right now. And look at that. They're making their way out onto the podium now. Great race for the McLaren team, and I'm very happy to see them there on the top step of the podium.
So let's review the updated driver's standings. This result narrows the gap between our championship leader and the rest of the standings. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? It's got to be Lando Norris, hasn't it? Smooth, confident and assured, I've got no doubt that he and his team are going to be over the moon with his performance today. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. There is also a strong showing from the McLaren team today as they make their way up the standings. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. Can't wait to see what's next. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've got to be adamant on that one. I do not think that that was the right strategy call. I think that was that was stupid. She was leading by six seconds. She could have managed that gap perfectly on those walk inters, which would have turned into slicks. And she's thrown away 20... Oh, let's say she's thrown away 26 points and only walked away with four. Lando wins. They had a George Russell Carlos Sainz. Cali got P4, so that's a fair chunk of points of Cali. Felipe Drugovic scores his first points in F1. Congratulations to the Brazilian. And something happened to Yuki Sonoda. I have no idea what happened. Maybe that's when Jackie came out uh, at the pit lane or something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's points lost right there. <sighs> why did she take that gamble? Why, why, why? I don't think the track was quite ready. I mean, I can understand going to it if she felt it, but to be dominating that race and only come away with P8. Oh, man. I honestly don't know what she was thinking. Uh, I don't know what she was thinking. I guess that's why we uh, we have the debrief when, uh, when she gets back to the garage. Just sitting on the box, waiting for us to decide what to do. Contract renewal for Cali. I am so, so tempted to ditch Cali, but if I do, I know she's going to uh, go to a better team, we'll say. You just know, uh, you know that's going to happen if that happens. She'll go in the opposite direction and she'll start dominating. Uh, makes me so glad I'm doing this as a final uh season for this game be glad when I get uh, the collabs uh, done and dusted anyway thank you all hope you enjoyed if you did leave a like don't forget to subscribe if you've not already done so playlists have appeared all around go check out some more Rockstar Pool 69 content at your viewing pleasure in the meantime though stay safe be kind to each other if you can't be kind be quiet no place for all you can't be kind to other people we will see you tomorrow for the British Grand Prix and F1 Manager 23 and I'll see you on Friday to see if uh, we decide to keep Cali or if we are going to go uh, in a different direction uh, with this team or not.